Yup, it's gonna be one of those videos. Cheers. Next. Today's video, right Whoa. now, I feel it already. We're in goddamn Santorini, Greece. Yeah. If you watch one of our videos from like five months ago, I say my number one dream destination to travel to is Santorini, Greece. I forgot about that. Yeah. That's true. And we're goddamn here. That's a good point. We that, made this shit happen. That's true. Rasmus, that was in the pool in Hawaii. We both named our top three travel destinations in the world. Mm -hmm. And Rasmus' number one was Santorini, Greece. And we're fucking here right and now. And now we're here. Now let's show a little bit of footage of Santorini that we've taken. Yeah. Oh shit, so it's B-roll. B-roll. So we're talking over the, these clips that yeah, are right, right now. Right now. Wait, we're so, so, so clips are playing over my voice right now. Correct. So so they can't see that I'm doing this? <laughs> they can't see that I'm pulling my d*** <laughs> out. Okay. Um, let's move on in the video. Yes. All right. Just quickly mention what we've been doing recently. We were just in London for one day. Mm -hmm. We did our first ever meetup. We did a fucking meetup. It was amazing. Yeah, shout out everyone there. Everyone. Edward. Jesse. We're gonna put all GTO. their faces on the screen. Should we? Yeah. Yeah. John. Charlie. Shiraz. Yep. And it was just it was an just amazing so time awesome. getting to know these people. It was just so awesome. Yeah. So that was London, literally for one day. Before that, we were in LA for a whole week. Yes. At Vid Summit. Oh. And once again, absolutely crazy. We got to meet our idol, our absolute idol, Gary V. Gary V. on the screen. Look, look, look at those smiles look on our faces. Look how happy we are. I could no, I remember when I was with I could not stop smiling. Mm -hmm. And I want to say, meeting him in person. He's even better in person than he is he's on Instagram. He's just so, like, nice is not really the right thing, but he no, is. Just is. so, I don't know what he, the right word is. He's such a good is. listener. Amazing listener. He's just so personable, even though he's this superstar influencer. Yeah. But, uh, like, yeah. I fucking love Gary Vee. And we also worked out with someone named Teron Beckham. Check out that video. He, he was, he's a famous fitness guy that someone we've looked up to for a long for time. For years. And we got to do a full workout with him. And he made a whole YouTube video of our workout together. That was and we plugged our channel on his 300,000 subscriber channel. Yeah. So Vin Vincent was fucking awesome, but now we're here. Let's move Before on. Before that, we were in Monterey, Mexico, visiting in Mexico Side. Then we were living in Playa del Carmen for a month, and that about catches you up to what we've been up to. This is the first time filming a video in like two weeks. I wasn't nervous, but I'm like, I feel a little off. I gotta get in my groove again. Yeah. But let's move on to today's video because I'm actually really, really excited about talking about this one. So mm -hmm. I, I'm gonna can I do another shot? Can I do a third shot? Can we? I mean, yeah, sure. Let's do a third okay, shot. Let's do a third shot. Fuck it, third shot. Go on ahead. that note. Cheers to creating the life that you want. And that's what this video is about. Yeah, that is what this video is about. Woo! Now let's actually get into the topic of this video. So, I don't know the title yet, maybe three things that you need to do to create the life that you want, or the three things you need to achieve success, something like that. Mm -hmm. But there are three points that I really want to talk about, and I fucking love these. The first point to create the life that you want is about your environment. Yeah. Right? So your environment either helps you progress, or it holds you back. This is the type of shit that you can't learn in a course. No, it's but not. It's like you more, have to talk to people. It's more important than any course. It's like foundational. Mm -hmm. And it's something that we've experienced so fucking much. Yeah. For example, at Vid Summit, yes. at the Cancun event, okay. when we're around See, people that help us progress, you fucking feel that. Okay, so. You feel it. And when you're around people that hold you back, you feel it too. But if you've, if you've only tried one or the other, you don't notice, mm -hmm. you know? I and mean, we've been in a ton of different environments recently. Mm -hmm. And each one changes you. For example, when we lived at home with our parents, we both experienced it. We feel like we're the people we were when we used to live at home. When we, were, we moved out when we were 18 years old. So when we were 18 years old is what I feel like. And when we were 18 years old, we were in high school. We were fucking losers. We were fucking nobodies. We had fucking nothing going for us. We had hobbies, but no like direction, no anything, no motivation. We felt that way because our environment created that. Mm -hmm. Right. I want to say that if you're in a bad environment, it's not your fault, right? That's the position you're in in life. And if it's holding you back, that's also not your fault because it's really fucking hard to like fight against that. But if after watching this video, you say in the same bad environment that's holding you back, that is your fault. Yes. If you don't make a change because it's something you have to do yourself. Yeah. You can change your environment. And if completely. you don't, if you, you don't can change whatever you want in your life. If you don't take action or initiative to do that, it's your fault. That's really where all of this shit stems from. Mm -hmm. Being aware that you can change anything in your life. Mm -hmm. That you are in control of everything. 
Also, if you're 400 pounds and you believe, like, that's who you are. That's what you are. You're a 400-pound person. No, you can lose 200 pounds. That's something I want to talk about in the next point. Okay. Which is... But we bleeped it out. Yeah. So it's not spoiling it. Um, and one other thing, if if when you hear me say that you're in control of changing your environment and you say that's not true, you're lying. Comment down below and tell us why. If you're not, tell us why and I'll tell you how that's not yep. true. For example... You this, are in control. This is what someone will say. Someone will and say... Let me, tell, let me tell you something. It's hard. It's really hard to change that environment. But you're in control. It's not impossible. Something I think that someone is going to say is... My environment, I, a few names come to mind of, of, of our subscribers. Because mm -hmm. we're so tight with many of, of, of our subscribers that I know their stories. Oh, and I, I know I, their situations. And I love it. Yeah. So, they're going to comment, yeah, I'm in college. I know I don't want to go to college. I know I'm not going to use this for anything because I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to do what you guys do. I want to do whatever. Um, but my parents won't let me drop out. Mm -hmm. I can't do anything about that. Mm -hmm. If they, If I drop out, they won't love me anymore. They won't support me they won't let me live at home they won't do whatever mm -hmm. that is a lie yeah that is a lie and gary vanderchuk actually talked about this exact example that i just brought up right as exactly in the talk yeah the so oh let's show some clip of that front row seats to gary vanderchuk's keynote presentation mm -hmm. so he brought up this exact point that i just said about kids who want to drop out of college but they won't because their parents say that they're not allowed to and that if they do drop out of college they won't love them anymore they won't support them or whatever and then Gary Vaynerchuk says, test them, try them. Mm -hmm. Because they love you, so they, they won't. As in, like, it's a threat. Yeah. And if they don't love you anymore after that? Maybe they shouldn't be your parents. We're very open-minded, mm -hmm. so we can we can change how we feel if a good point is brought up. Mm -hmm. So if you disagree with anything, comment down below and tell us what you disagree with. I love having these discussions. Mm -hmm. So this is something I want to make a full video about, which is you're going to college, you don't want to be going to college, what should you do? But I really mm -hmm. want to say... That if you're going to college and you're ha you're in a major that you know for a fact that you're not going to use for your career, which you really is want to, so many people. Let me finish. So many people. If you know you're in that situation, drop out now or tomorrow, yeah. right now. Yep. That's what I think. And actually, this point eventually leads into the third point, which we haven't gotten to yet. Uh -huh. Yeah, it does. Which uh, reminds me, we should probably move on to the other points soon. Well, briefly, I want to say this. Mm -hmm. The argument for people going to college that don't want to be doing what they're doing, but they still choose to go to college, mm -hmm. is that, oh, it's a plan B. Yeah, that that's, one, that's like the one. most common rebuttal to that. And it's so funny because, what, you're spending 50 hours a week on your on plan B. On a plan B? And then your plan A. Stop lying to yourself. Plan A, you're Stop doing lying on the weekends me. and in the mornings when you have time for it. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. You're literally planning for failure. If you have a plan B, you're planning to fail. For the plan Especially when you're spending 90% of your time on that. Mm -hmm. It's insane. I want to make a full video about that, but that's just briefly what I think there. Yeah. The first thing is to change your environment by getting out of what's holding you back, right? Then you also have to get into an environment that's going to help you progress. Mm -hmm. So to do that, you have to get around people that have what you want or have the same goals as you, are motivated, something like that. Right? Mm -hmm. But how the fuck do you do that? I mean, I know. Yeah. So you literally have to the find internet. these people. The fucking internet. Because I cannot, for the life of me, find these people in real life. For fucking real. I can't just go out in my neighborhood. Like, they're not, they don't exist. Yeah. You know? Like, yeah. so few people this are, are like us with the mindset and wanting to actually live the life they want. Yeah. Are not controlled by the society's, you know, way of life. Right? Uh -huh. That whole thing. Right. Um, so the way we have found people that and surround ourselves with is through the internet mostly facebook like i'm yeah. just saying exactly this is actionable right mm -hmm. literally go on fucking facebook facebook groups join the mentored by millionaires facebook group which is mike Vistil's facebook group a free facebook group of people like you and me mm -hmm. shit like that anyway so literally make friends with these people in these facebook groups uh, yeah so you mentioned facebook groups but the one i like even more is the comment section of YouTube videos. Yeah. Because the comment section of YouTube videos is a congregation of word that I learned from a book that we're reading, Dot Com Secrets. Mm -hmm. Fucking the holy bible of online marketing. Yeah, it's insane. It's amazing. Um, a congregation of people who have the same interests as you. Mm -hmm. And how do we know they have the same interests? Because they're watching the same video as you are. Mm -hmm. So, and then there are the people commenting. They're the ones who engage. You're the one engaging. Boom. That's my favorite place. Mm -hmm. Which is where we actually recently made one of our new best friends. Mm -hmm. 
Shout out. I know you're watching this video, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> Zach is someone who's been commenting on our videos for a long time. Showing hella love. Yeah, just crazy supportive. And then he lives in LA. So when we went out for Vid Summit, we met. And we, we didn't just meet. We lived together. Yeah, for six days. And now we're... It feels like we've known each other for years. Yeah, which is pretty no, crazy. No, because we're so fucking on point when it comes to mindset and what we want. Uh -huh. Like, he's different from everyone else. Yeah. You know, I can tell that he's for real. And those are the kinds of people you need to surround yourself with. Mm -hmm. Point number one, we should wrap it up and yeah. move on to point number two. Wrap up point number one. To create the life that you want, you have to get out of the bad environment if you're in a bad environment and go into a good environment you are in control of it 100 mm -hmm. and then go out and find like-minded like people point number two to create the life that you really want in one is, word in, in one, one, word, word, one word is sacrifice yes right everyone who has the life that you want super successful they've made so much sacrifice that no one will ever hear about no one will ever see mm -hmm. Because it's, it's all behind the scenes. You don't see it anywhere. And I want to briefly talk about the sacrifices we've made. Because people people don't know that. I think people, people like our, our old friends will hit us up. They're like, okay, this is pretty cool what you guys are doing. Can you help me out maybe? Right? I'm like, sure. Like, I'd love to. I really, I really would love yeah, to. There are specific names, but we won't mention names. Yeah. It's just specific people. Like, yeah, I, I really would love to, and I will. So then I do. And the first thing I say is Wait. give up this, this, this. Work as many hours as you can. To save up money so you can fund your online business. Uh -huh. And then, and then they're like, not what oh they shit, that's what this takes? Oh, that's what this takes? Uh, then we never hear back from them again. So, going on to your point. But after that, after that, I want to mention the biggest things that people won't sacrifice. Mm -hmm. The biggest things that people, yeah, they don't want to let go. They're not willing to let go of to create the life that they want. So, say what you were going to say. Which was, oh, the sacrifices that we've made in our lives. Yeah. Huh. We've yes. made tons of sacrifices. Mm -hmm. Without even realizing it almost. Mm -hmm. It's only like now, once you look back, like, oh shit. Mm -hmm. I used to do this, 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 and this all the time. I enjoy doing all those things, but I don't do them anymore. Yeah. Which kind of sucks, but it is it is what it is. I want to talk about the time when we first built our first online businesses, uh -huh. which was our publishing businesses. Mm -hmm. So this is while we were going to college. So let's just talk about the shit, like, shit life we had. We ate shit when we were doing that. Uh -huh. So we were living at home with our parents. Full-time college students was at 40 hours a week, 10 classes, uh -huh. something like that. Uh -huh. We were 4.0 students, so we studied our asses off. Literal 4.0 GPA, both of us. It's not because we're smarter than everyone else. It's just because we work harder than everyone else. I made everything in college. And we work harder than everyone else because we're more motivated than everyone else. That's where everything stems from, your motivation. I found everything in college. or found a way to turn all into memorization. Yeah. And memorization is just repetition, and right. it's just time. You can talk about that forever. We also have part-time jobs. I was working four days a week delivering Chinese food two and a half hour shifts and I remember while I was driving delivering Chinese food I could listen to music or whatever but I always listen to podcasts with Stephen James and then also in the meantime when I did not have deliveries I remember sitting in my car going through my notes school notes school notes that I took studying for for classes mm -hmm. like that's what that was like I had two part-time jobs one was working front desk secretary at a physical therapy office mm -hmm which fucking sucked mm -hmm. like it was a good job compared to other shit but it was still just fucking horrible i just have such a distasteful opinion towards jobs jobs in general although yeah. the delivering chinese food is like that, the best job and, ever and, in my opinion and i also delivered chinese food that was actually okay I'll For a job, that, was an awesome that was a sick job that yeah. was a sick job full-time students two part-time jobs and then we were building our businesses mm -hmm. when we had time to do that mm -hmm. At that time, I was doing drop shipping. I was doing my drop shipping business. Mm -hmm. I was literally waking up every morning before class, uh, working on it, building the website. This was back in 2016. Answering emails, doing whatever. And then at night before bed until usually 11 or 12, mm -hmm. on our fucking computers. Mm -hmm. And then wake up the next morning, start as soon as we got up, mm -hmm. you know? And once the, one thing that this doesn't even include is, uh, is gym life. Yeah. Anyone who says they don't have time to go to the gym, you're lying. Yeah, you're a big fat liar. You, you it's not just liar, not a priority. Liar, pants on fire. It's just not a priority for you. So we were doing all that as well. I, okay, let's then just point out the fact real quick that people probably don't realize that we have been going to the gym for eight years straight with never taking more than seven to ten days off yeah. in a row, like for recovery purposes normally. 
ever in eight straight years. I think we're put nine come Christmas. Well, I took like six months off because I had meningitis. Oh, yeah, yeah, you had that. But I feel like that's a fair excuse. Meningitis is a bad disease yeah, that, that you can die from. Yeah. Two near death experiences. But anyway. And here are all the things we gave up in that time. And since then. Ever since then, we've given up all these things. TV. Have not watched TV don't in watch two TV. years. Video games. I've not played. Video don't play games any video games. games. You play Pokemon Go all the time. I play Pokemon Go so when I'm out. Sports. Sports. I love like watching sports. World's biggest Brooklyn Nets fan, Yankees fan, Jets fan. Mm-hmm. Don't watch any of the games anymore. I love football. I, I love watching Sunday night football. Not Sunday night football, but just football all day on Sundays. There's barely even time to keep up with sports scores and shit like that. Yeah. So don't watch any sports anymore. Fantasy sports was my life. Fantasy football, fantasy baseball, fantasy basketball. If you ask the people in our leagues, because we've been playing with the same people for the last five or six years, they fucking hate us now because they're not active. I know, because we, we, we don't have time to be. I just can't be. We used so. to be the most active. Yeah. Because like when I enjoy something, I give it 100%. Mm-hmm. I just have this all or nothing mentality that gets applied to everything in life. Yeah. So. And then I also want to talk about the sacrifices we made while building our YouTube channel. Uh-huh. When we first started, we posted a video every other day for five months straight. Without that, it came out to like seventy videos without missing a motherfucking upload. Not a single upload. But our life in that time consisted of filming and editing. That's yeah, basically all we did. Because we didn't work on our Kindle businesses anymore. No one sees what we had to say no to in that time. Do mm-hmm. you know how many adventures we were invited to go on? We in were that living time? in Hawaii. Yeah. There's shit to do everywhere. We're always getting invited to, oh, let's go surfing, let's go to North Shore, let's go on this awesome hike, let's go to this waterfall. Hawaii is... You had to say fucking no to 90% of it. Hawaii is the most highly densely populated of fun activities place yeah. in the world. That didn't make much sense, but you know what I mean. The last thing I want to say on the point of sacrifice, this doesn't only apply to entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. This applies to every area of your life. Or anything good. For example, let's say fitness. Anyone who has an incredible body, you do not see all the shit that they've done to achieve that. They had to sacrifice so much. And for example, with us, we've lost over 50 pounds. Oh, both of us. We used to weigh, I weigh about 160. I've gained a little bit of weight. I'm like 167 now. Mm-hmm. I used to weigh 155-ish. I used to weigh 205 pounds. Same. I've lost over 50 pounds. Yeah. But I, I, lost fi- see, I lost 55 pounds at my most. People don't see what it takes to do that. People always ask for uh, pictures of us at our fattest. But we like don't have them. I know. Oh, which is, and I know, I remember why. Mm-hmm. So when I was at 205, I was at a very strange point in my life. That was like the bottoming out point. I was fucking embarrassed and, for who I was. was the, I did not want there to be any proof or any pictures or videos of me. And that was the one time we were ever apart in our lives. Mm-hmm. It was this one month stretch. And at that point, I blew up to 205. It wasn't because of that. It was a fucking weird time. And I don't have pictures of myself from then. We're going to talk all about this in another video. We're going to make like a whole backstory video talking about mm-hmm. shit like that. Because there's actually a lot to learn from the things we've gone through. Yeah. Uh, I want to say when we lost those 50 pounds, people don't understand. We both counted everything we ate. We weighed it out and counted everything we ate for a whole year. Mm-hmm. So if you say you can lose weight, try counting, setting a calorie count, count all of it. And follow a plan like that, and then tell me you can't lose weight. But oh, that all I'm saying is people just don't understand that you have to sacrifice so much to get these incredible results. People always say, "Oh, but that won't—that's not enjoyable, or I don't want to." Like, yeah, exactly. You thought you think I want to do? You think I want to waste my time, kind of shit? But no, that's what it takes for for me, at least, to get the best results. I want to end the second point on one of my favorite quotes, and that is, "If you want to have results that no one else has, you have to be able." Or you have to be willing to do things no one else will do. That's real shit. It's real fucking shit. Third point is... So the third point is not really a thing you have to do to achieve the life that you want. It's more just a point that I want to talk about. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. And that is... It's fucking scary. Mm-hmm. Like, it's scary doing these things that it takes. For example, telling your parents... Like, defying your parents. Dropping out of college. For us, the big thing for us, the thing that really changed our life was starting the YouTube channel. YouTube channel. Right? That changed our fucking life. I was, and I want to say... I was so scared. That was the biggest fear in my life mm-hmm. up until then, yeah. was being on camera. Mm-hmm. Nothing scared the shit out of me more than that. It took us eight months of literally every week. We're like, all right, it's time to start the channel. Look, now, we'll uh, start on Friday. No, we'll start on Monday. We'll start on Wednesday. We went like that for eight months. It took eight months before we actually did it. I, I want to stress how I felt about this before we started. Uh-huh. Just the thought of being on camera uh-huh. made me, made, gave, made my heart race. I swear. Uh-huh. It was fucking like that. Uh-huh. 
And if you feel the same way, everyone, I know I did, I felt the exact same way. Like, it's super fucking scary. And this goes back to the point that if you want what people, most people don't have, you have to be willing to do what most people won't do. Mm-hmm. And that is to overcome your fears such as that. I feel like that's Say so- no to your parents. Drop out when everyone is going to fucking judge you. I feel like... Do everything like that. The third point is really just being aware of the fact uh-huh. that it's scary and hard. Yeah. It's like some people, some people sit there and watch this video and they think like, They'll think that, exactly, it's scary and hard, and they think that that's, that's not normal, that that's mm-hmm. not how it's supposed to be. Oh, I can't do it because it's that way. Mm-hmm. Like, no, just be aware that it's supposed to be that way. Yeah. So. so just, whatever you want in your life, you can do it, but it's fucking hard, and it's scary, and it's like that for everyone. Mm-hmm. This rooster won't shut the fuck up! It works, thank you. Mm. Ah, no, it didn't. So yeah, I don't, I don't want to spend too much time on the last one, I just want to say that. Right? Just be aware that it's supposed to be that way. Like everything, every and there's even right now there's things that I want to do. Uh, I'm honest, and it scares the shit out of me, so I'm kind of procrastinating with some of it. Like what? I'm I'm still fucking scared of public speaking. Mm. You know, and yeah. I know that that's something we have to improve on. We did, and the only it. way you can improve on it is by doing it. You we, know, we did it in Cancun. Yeah, we got the first taste of it, and I was just, not I was not happy with our performance. But that's just what it is. It takes I know, practice. I know. So like yeah. any incredible public speaker, <laughs> they was not born that way. They mm-hmm. put in so much practice, mm-hmm. and they were so scared, and then they overcame it. And you can learn to deal with anything. So what? I just want to end on that point. Okay. Yeah. So that covers those three points. Mm-hmm. I what I really want to say is something we've not mentioned is we got a brand new fucking camera. Like, can you tell? I hope you can tell. Comment down below and let (laughs) us know if you can tell, because this show is expensive. We've been filming with our iPhone forever. Now we got a real camera, Sony A6300. Yeah. We have, I don't, don't, it's, there's so many buttons and widgets. I have no idea how to, like, calibrate it for, like, the perfect game. We just kind of set it up and hit record. I mean, I hope it's filming right now. Yeah. Our first 90-something videos, all shot from iPhones. Uh All from iPhones. This is the first video from, like, a professional camera. Hopefully it looks good. Uh, So... With that said, magic emoji of the day is the camera. It's the camera emoji. Oh, perfect. Drop that camera emoji. Perfect. In honor of this new camera. <laughs> so the iPhone camera was great and all, but this shit is a le- is a next level. Oh yeah. So this is a level up. It's a level up. Move. The videography is going to. We want exactly. We want we want to level up our YouTube games. So we got a camera that can help us with that. All right. So let's shut the fuck up. We'll see you guys in the next video. Maybe what? give a little view of what we can see. This is what okay. this is what we've been looking at the whole time. Whoa. It's not the epic Santorini White Houses and all. It's no, that's on the other side of the Yeah, island. you know, people don't really know. The other side looks kind of like a wasteland. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. there's the ocean right there. It's the Mediterranean. Right there. Okay. All right. Guys, we will see you in the next video. Goodbye. Like, comment. Okay, see ya.